You order the uh, regular meeting of the Sacramento County Sanitation District, the Sacramento Area Sewer District, and the Financing Authority for May 10th, 2023. Look for a roll call, please. Good morning, directors. Uh, members Daniels or Karpinski, Karpinski Costa? Present. I'm Desmond? not Daniels. Here. Frost? Here. Hume? Here. Kaplan? Here. Kennedy? Here. Lolowe? Here. Maple? Here. Orozco? Orozco here. Orozco, thank you, and my apology. Robles? Here. Cerna? Here. Uh, and uh, Swin? Here. Okay. Soon, yes. Soon, thank you. Um, Valenzuela? Here. Vang? Villegas? Here. And then uh, let the record reflect that you do have a quorum. Uh, Chair Sander will be here soon. And I did get a note that uh, Member Aquino will be absent today. Great, thank you. And in order to make him feel welcomed for his diminutive name tag, would you please join uh, Director Viegas in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> That's funny. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Vice Chair Hume, I have a couple of announcements to read. That'd be great. Thank you. This meeting of the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District is being broadcast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel, on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T UVerse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and is live streamed at metro14live.sacccounty.gov. Today's meeting will replace Sunday, May 14th at 9 a.m. on Channel 14. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com forward slash Metro Cable 14. In accordance with Government Code 54952.3, compensation for meetings of these legislative bodies is required to be verbally disclosed. The amount of $100 will be paid for each member participating today as a member of the Sacramento County Regional Sanitation District, and the amount of $100 will be paid for each board member participating today as a member of the Sacramento Area Sewer District. Compensation for Sacramento County Supervisors and City of Sacramento Council members is paid to the county and city respectively and to partially offset the cost of those governments. Compensation for other board Board members is delivered directly to those individuals. The Board of Directors fosters public engagement during the meeting and encourages public participation, civility, and use of courteous language. The Board does not condone the use of profanity, vulgar language, gestures, or other inappropriate behavior, including personal attacks or threats directed towards any meeting participant. Each speaker will be given two minutes to make a public comment and are limited to making one comment per agenda item or off agenda matter. And please be mindful of the comment procedures to avoid being interrupted or disconnected while making your comment. To make a comment in person, please fill out a speaker request form and hand it to clerk staff. When the chair opens public comments, uh, your name will be called and please come to the podium to make your comment. To make a comment by phone, dial 916-875-2501 and follow the prompts to leave a message. Clerk staff will call and transfer each caller into the meeting. You may also send written comments by email to boardclerk at sacccounty.gov and your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. And if you need an accommodation pursuant to the Americans with Disabilities Act or for medical or other reasons, please see clerk staff for assistance or contact the clerk's office at 916-874-5451 or by email at boardclerk at sacccounty.gov. Thank you in advance for your courtesy and understanding of the meeting procedures. Okay, thank you. And I see the chair uh, imminently approaching. And so as he approaches, we'll go ahead and uh, begin with uh, section one, with acting as the County Sanitation District fi Financing Authority and the Re Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District. So for item number one, you are adopting the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and the Sacramento County Sanitation District's Financing Authority fiscal year 2023-24 final budgets. Good morning. And Welcome, Chair Sander. Good morning, board. Uh, this is quite a full uh, group we've got here. We're going to have to start worrying about chairs if uh, we get any less absences than this. Um, today's budget item, this is for the regional SAN budget. 
Um, this budget was introduced on April 12th, and we haven't made any substantial changes since then. Just a real quick summary, there, there is a $264 million operating budget in front of you that includes an increase of 13.4%, and that's really increases across the board, but in particular, uh, chemicals is the one that really came to the forefront, as, as you're well aware. Um, the capital budget is just over $368 million. That's an increase of $135 million. It is, uh, again, due to the inflation uh, across the board of construction project costs, but also, in particular, the harvest water uh, program is ramping up, and we're going to be starting construction. So you're going to see an increase in the capital as that ramps up and then, and then back down. Uh, there are no rate increases in pr proposed this fiscal year. And we are looking basically for a recommendation uh, to approve, or to uh, a, di a direction to approve the staff recommendations and uh, approve the fiscal year 23 24 budget. All right. Any questions from board members? Seeing none, we're open for a motion. I move approval of Frost. Second, Sue. We do not have any public comment on this item, correct? We do not have any public comments, and if you can allow me to just check one other place. Uh, we do not have any public comments. Okay, roll call, please. Uh, members Karpinski Costa? Yes. Desmond? Aye. Frost? Yes. Hume? Aye. Kaplan? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Loloi? Aye. Maple? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Robles? Aye. Serna? Aye. Soon? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Viegas? Aye. And Sander? Aye. <clears throat> uh, that's a unanimous vote with those members present. All right. That brings us on to our next item. For item number two, you are also acting as the Sacramento County Sanitation District's Financing Authority <clears throat> in the Sacramento Area Sewer District. Adopt the Sacramento Area Sewer District and the Sacramento County Sanitation District's Financing Authority fiscal year 2023-24 final budgets. Well, once again, a very similar story. This is the SAC sewer budget. Uh, it was introduced on April 12th, and again, we haven't made any significant changes. I do want to note you actually have a copy of the budget uh, at your chair. Um, there was a column missing in the capital projects. It's, um, I think it's page 24, but the capital projects are missing their individual budget amounts. The dollar total at the bottom <coughs> is correct but those were missing in the original distribution. So we just gave you that in case you needed to reference it. Uh, it's uh, 146 million plus uh, operating budget. That's an increase of 9.6% this year. And again, it's really across the board inflation, uh, both on labor and then also services and supplies. The capital budget is a $36 million plus capital budget. That's a decrease of $4 million, and although overall our construction projects continue to increase in cost, this one is just the natural variability of the projects. Um, harvest water's ramping up in the regional sand side. Um, a large project is rolling off on the Sac sewer side, and that's the Highlands Sewer Rehabilitation Project. And so that uh, resulted in a, a decrease of $4 million on the capital budget. And with that, I'm looking for a motion to approve the staff recommendations to approve our budgets for fiscal year 23-24. If there's no public comment, I'll go ahead and make that motion. We do not have any public comments. <clears throat> there's a second? Second. Roll call, please. Um, and was the second from? Lolloi. Mr. Lolloi. Okay, thank you. Members Karpinski-Costa? Yes. <clears throat> Desmond? Aye. Frost? Hume? Aye. Kaplan? Aye. Kennedy? Here. Lolloi? Aye. Maple? Aye. Orozco? Orozco? Aye. Okay. Uh, Robles? Aye. Serna? Aye. Soon? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Uh, Vang? Uh, Villegas? Aye. And Sander? Aye. And that's a unanimous vote with those members present. All right. That brings us on to item number three. For item number three, you're acting as the Sacramento <coughs> County Sanitation District's Financing Authority and the regional, Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and the Sacramento Area Sewer District. Execution and delivery of an 
Ambitory supplement to the master installment purchase contract for the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and for the Sacramento Area Sewer District and certain other related actions. <clears throat> and a mandatory supplement. I like that. All right, staff report. There's, there's no staff report. I'll move consent. No questions of. On this item? All right, very good. Motion made. Is there a second? Maple second. Second. Maple seconds. Got that. All right. Any public comment on this item? No public comments. Very good. Roll call, please. Okay. Uh, Karpinski Costa? Yes. <clears throat> Desmond? Aye. Frost? Aye. Hume? Aye. Kaplan? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Laloe? Aye. Maple? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Robles? Aye. Cer Cerna? Aye. Soon? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Villegas? Aye. Sander? Aye. Unanimous vote with those members present. And I'm sorry, I'll go on record that that was a consent matter, or was it not? No, it was a separate matter. Okay, for now you're acting as the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation Districts for your consent matters, items four through six. Move approval. Second. Villegas. Moved by Kaplan. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Seeing none, okay. roll call. Roll, roll, roll. Karpinski Costa? Yes. Desmond? Aye. Frost? Aye. Hume? Here. Kaplan? I mean, I. Ka Aye. Ka Kaplan? <laughs> now it's infectious. Kennedy? Aye. Laloe? Aye. Maple? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Robles? Aye. Cerna? Aye. Soon? Aye. And uh, Valenzuela? Yes. Villegas? Aye. Sander? Aye. Unanimous vote with those members present. May I ask who made the second? Villegas over here. Okay, thank you. All right. That takes us to item number seven. Item number seven, you're acting as the Sacramento Regional <coughs> County Sanitation Dis District. This is a receive and update on the biosolids management plan, and there is a PowerPoint for this item. Which we have in front of us. Welcome. Morning, Chair, members of the board. I'm, uh, oh, thank you. I'm Steve Nabozik, and uh, I'll be presenting information on the biosolids management program today. I need about 10 minutes of your time this morning on the formal presentation to kind of walk you through our process of what we've been working on. Um, and I'm open for questions uh, during or after. For today's discussion, we thought it would be good to start with an overview of our solids process. Then I'll be providing background on our biosolids recycling facility. I'll share the results of our biosolids recycling alternative study, and then close out with recommendations and next steps. So when wastewater comes into the plant, the liquid portions treated and discharged to the river, while the solids are separated out at various points. Most of them settle out in the primary sedimentation tanks, which are shown in blue, they're also screened and settled out of the BNR and secondary sedimentation tanks shown in green. All the solids are then sent to the digesters for treatment where they're broken down and stabilized and it's shown in the red. And after digestion, about 75% of the biosolids are sent to our solid storage basins, which are uh, shown in yellow. And those basins act as a wide spot in, in the line, um, and they're providing the storage that we need until the solids are harvested in summer months for final disposal onto the line dedicated land disposal units. And those are those plots of land at the receiving end of the yellow arrows that you can see on the, on the figure. The remaining 25% of our biosolids um, from the digesters go to the biosolids recycling facility. That's shown with the purple box. That's where the recycling happens. Um, and just to differentiate on the quality of biosolids, um, the, the biosolids coming out of the digesters are referred to as class B. Um, they still contain pathogens, so there are use restrictions. Um, so the, our ability to, um, to dispose on site is, uh, is, is really a big benefit for that. Most agencies are hauling those off to uh, you know, sites that take the restricted materials. Um, biosolids coming out of the BRF are class A biosolids. 
all pathogens removed, unrestricted reuse. So as far as some background, the BRF is a public-private partnership that was initiated in 2002. We pay Synegro a capital and operational component for the processing of the solids, and they're responsible for all aspects of the operation. We produce 7,300 dry tons of Class A biosolids um, annually, and those are beneficially reused as fertilizer at the Silva Valley Farms, which is local. The contract expires in December of 2024. And with that in mind, we updated your board on the biosolids management program back in January of 2020. And it, we, we were focused on our future recycling efforts and how that might play out. Um, one of the items that we discussed in detail with your board at that time was the higher cost of recycling biosolids versus on-site disposal. It's you know on the order of $900 a dry ton uh, to, for recycling efforts, where what we do on site is about $150 a dry ton. So significant cost difference. Um, but after that discussion, your board directed staff to update the management plan and gave us the following feedback. First was continu to continue recycling, um, balance cost with environment, rec recognize evolving regulations, and report back findings, and that's why we're here today. So with the direction from your board, we kicked off the study. We started by evaluating performance and capacity of the existing systems. We use, the, we use that information with flow and load projections and consideration of existing and future regulations to build a long list of alternatives. Then we screened though that, uh, it was a pretty long list. I think we were up uh, almost to 30. We screened, uh, we screened those down with non-discretionary pass-fail criteria and the most viable alternatives pass through to the detailed evaluation. Um, we evaluated both on financial, and that's life cycle costs through, uh, through 2050, and non-financial criteria and resulted in a recommended alternative, and we'll be sharing that with you shortly. So as we moved into the detailed evaluation, we broke things down into two areas. We considered digestion alternatives and recycling alternatives. We considered those separately. It just made sense for the study. The digestion alternatives we considered were mesophilic anaerobic digestion, I'll be referring to that as MAD, um, recuperative thickening, and thermal hydrolysis. MAD is uh, what we do today, it's our current, current business practice, um, so it's considered our baseline. And recuperative thickening and thermal hydrolysis uh, they're just variations of our current digestion practice, and the goal is to um, it's, it's to expand the capacity. They, they both use different ways to, to do that, but where you're looking to expand capacity and avoid building a digester sooner. Um, we looked at four recycling alternatives. All of them, I'm not gonna go into detail on the technologies, but all of them use dewatering as a first step out of our digesters. All of them have a thermal component and a, uh, for processing and treatment, and it's that thermal component that varies uh, as you go through these. Um, they all consider trucking of the final product to its endpoint, and all result in a Class A unrestricted, um, unrestricted product for reuse. The BRF is our baseline alternative. Uh, it's where pro uh, the, the processing will occur on site with third party ownership and operation. We also looked at thermal chemical hydrolysis. Um, that consists of hauling the dewatered cake off-site for processing. Um, we looked at solar drying, which requires new facilities on-site that would be owned and operated by Regional SAN. And the last one we looked at was our current uh, biosolids recycling facility with an add-on of pyrolysis, and that's our advanced thermal treatment alternative that addresses the potential uh, future regulations for, for PFOS. And I can try to give you the scientific pronunciation of that, but I don't think it'd be appreciated. Um, in, in regards to the recycling scenarios, we took that direction from your board to continue recycling. And for our evaluation, we set our baseline recycle, recycling objective at 25%, which is what we do now. But we also considered uh, 50 and 100%. 
So the, this is where we start getting into the, the good stuff. This slide shows the financial results of the evaluation at 25% at the 25% recycling scenario in life cycle costs. The costs presented are conceptual, they're planning level costs, and I, I, I think everyone's aware they're, they're really useful tools uh, to make comparisons across alternatives, but we shouldn't be grabbing these numbers and throwing them into our final budget, um, but a good, good comparative uh, tools. So when we look at the table, let's start in the upper left at MAD and BRF. Again, that is our baseline alternative. It's the one that's highlighted. Um, it's what we do today, and it's also the lowest life cycle cost alternative. As you move across the row through the other post-digestion alternatives, you just see a comparative increase in cost. Um, and then as you uh, drop down the rows, those are the different digestion alternatives. Uh, that we considered in the study. And we looked at those because we were initially thinking with the capital cost of building a new digester that uh, if we could do some optimization, those might be more cost-effective solutions on our digestion, but that ended up not being the case. So from a financial standpoint, our current solids operations are the low-cost alternative. And this pattern is duplicated at 50 and 100%. Um, the tables look just like this, uh, different numbers. Um, we also considered a number of non-financial factors uh, when we were going through the evaluation. This list is uh, not all inclusive, um, you know, but um, so there are some others, but you know, these are the ones that kind of uh, were, were pretty important to the study. Uh, permitting and regulatory compliance and the burden on staff post-construction. Air emissions, uh, that's greenhouse gas and toxic air emissions. Uh, the, the greenhouse gas emissions were actually quantified. Um, impact on worker safety, community compatibility, and flexibility to meet future uh, regulations. Um, and when doing that, the BR, when, when going through the non-financial um, criteria, the BRF, again, ranked highest um, of all the alternatives. So with that, we have some pretty uh, non-thrilling recommendations. Uh, <laughs> pretty much continue doing what we're doing. We made, we made a good, the board 20 years ago, your board 20 years ago made a, made a good decision. Um, we wanna continue recycling biosolids at the current level. Uh, we think 25% is the appropriate level of recycling. It meets our current service level. It provides diversification, diversification in our solids program, and it keeps costs at a manageable level. We also uh, wanna continue the partnership with Cinegro, uh, continue producing a Class A product. The BRF is the lowest cost resource recovery option and has the highest non-financial score. Uh, we also, and, and as we're, we're over the next years, as this project is uh, implemented uh, or continues, we want to continue to monitor the regulatory environment for PFOS, uh, organics diversion related requirements, as well as other emerging issues. Overall, I think we feel that this alternative is a good balance between cost and the environment. It provides flexibility for increasing recycling in the future and it reinforces our environmental stewardship value of practicing green business decisions and implementing sustainable practices. So the next steps would be to finalize the biosolids management plan, initiate negotiations with Cinegro to extend the contract for biosolids recycling, and bring that agreement back to your board before December of 2024. And in regards to what your board is being asked to do today, it's direct staff to begin negotiations with Cinegro to amend the biosolids contract. And I can take any questions. All right, questions from the board. Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Chair. Um, initiate negotiations with Cinegro to extend the contract for biosolids recycling. Um, is how many renewals are in the original contract and why aren't we just, why aren't we doing an RFP to see what else is out there? Um, it's a good question. There is, we, we've checked with council and we have the ability to amend this contract. Uh, Cinegro's in a really unique situation to respond to this. They've been 
uh, they've owned and operated that facility for 20 years now, and they are really the best and well positioned to continue doing that. We've been very happy with our relationship with Cinegro, and we don't really see a reason unless it's your board's desire to do that. We, we do think we have a, a great partnership outlined uh, with, with what we're doing right now. Yeah, and I, I'm not being critical of Cinegro at, at all. I just, um, you know, when you have a 20 year relationship, sometimes it's beneficial to go out and find out if there's another partner out there um, that for another, I mean, 20 years is a long time. Um, to, to, it, not to, it, not disregarding your comment. The, the, Appreciate that. The, the, um, <laughs> The, the, just so to, I didn't go over it in the in the formal presentation, we are not looking to extend for 20 years right now. We're thinking uh, at at the far at the, at the mac at the far end or the long term end would be closer to 10 years because there are so many developing regulations right now. Um, we think this positions us really good to react to those, but we don't want to overcommit. We, 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 we just, we want to kind of see what happens over the next five years and be able to adjust uh, 10 years out. And I'm not saying I hate that idea. I'm just saying that, you know, since we have been in this relationship, there's probably, you know, because of technology has evolved, there's probably a number of partners, potential partners out there in addition to Cinegro that I don't know how, how the rest of the board feels, but I think is worth looking at. That's all. <clears throat> Mr. Hume. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, Steve, thank you for uh, what obviously there were a lot of variables and analysis behind uh, this process that you were able to put into a very succinct uh, presentation, so I appreciate that. Um, and I, I, I want to ask a question about the, the table that you put together regarding the different options. You know, I think this board has expressed willingness in the past, and, and I do appreciate that in one of your uh, filters or sieves, sieves uh, was um, financial and non-financial consideration, but I think this board in the past has expressed a willingness to be a, a tip of the spear regard, regarding emerging technology uh, in order to advance uh, best practices. And so my question on the, the third column there, BRF and uh, pyrolysis, uh, obviously that and is, is means it's an additive uh, technique than just BRF alone. What does pyrolysis add to the equation or what does it do that's in addition? It, it adds extremely high heat um, and basically uh, it's, it's, it's not gasification. Uh, I think it's operating up at about 1600 degrees uh, with lack of oxygen and it's really, it's, it's cooking off for lack of better terms uh, uh, to the point that we, uh, the point that air emissions have not even been an issue with um, with the with the uh, implementation of pyrolysis at other and other locations. It is newer. Um, it's what the wastewater uh, the the wastewater agencies are kind of hanging their hat on as a potential to be able to address PFAS regulations if they become a number in a permit. And so is that the primary benefit to engaging in that process is whatever PFOS benefit would come out of it? I would say our true focus for today, uh, you know, uh, moving forward in the near term is the first three columns in that table. BRF and pyrolysis is that long-term look to make sure that we have flexibility to adjust to regulations. Um, and pyrolysis does not fit well. Um, it, it, it likes an input of a very uniform uh, uh, homogeneous material and uh, the thermal chemical hydrolysis, which is offsite, is more in uh, a liquid, uh, it comes out as a liquid format, so that is not a good input for pyrolysis. And then the solar dryer, it just is not a fine homogeneous material like our recycled pellet is. So um, that's why we've only coupled pyrolysis with BRF. It really is the best alternative for that future, for the future regulations we're eyeing. So that's a process we may be looking at in the future? I'm just trying to yes. figure out what the $60 million life cycle cost buys us. The $60 million life cycle buys us. It only buy, we, we would only come to your board and suggest that alternative if PFOS regulations uh, become a number in our permit and what it would buy us at that point is compliance. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mr. Simmons. 
Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Steve, for the presentation. Um, I just want to get a better sense of the sustainability of our facility. So, you know, we're talking about 25% recycling, so 75% uh, end up going through further treatment and end up in our line dedicated land disposal sites. Have you done a, uh, or have we done a, a, a site life analysis on those uh, line dedicated land disposal units um, at we, a current rate? We do know that um, we, we, we have an idea of when future uh, lined dedicated dan land disposal units are needed. I think the next one comes in the mid 2040s. Um, all those are lined, all the leachate, anything that uh, is captured in the liner goes back to our headworks. Mm -hmm. So we're not impacting groundwater uh, out, out at the site. Um, and I, as far as sustainability goes, I, I don't think we should get too hung up on the, the class B and the class A. It is good that we're putting a class A unrestricted product out there that local farmers can use for um, fertilizer. but. There, there's a benefit that we just shouldn't overlook on the practicality and the efficiency of applying these solids on site. Um, it's, we're not doing harm, and um, we've, our, our forefathers gave us a great piece of land to be able to operate our system like this. Um, and just think of all the trucks that that keeps off the road. You know, there, there is a lot of trucking involved with those cl the, the Class A. All the Class A materials are driving around our area to, to their final endpoint. We, it's, it's, it's not only good from an emission standpoint, it's also just good as a, a, a community partner um, to try to alleviate some of that stress in the local roadways. So. Right, but ap so after 2040, what, you need more units, right? Yes, so, so that's uh, understood. So the, if you look uh, at the uh, top DLD on the figure that uh -huh. we're showing, yeah. the, the one to the right, that is a closed DLD right now. That, that is the next DLD that we would line, that, that plot of the, the, the square plot of land that's right to the right of that red arrow pointing up. That is our next DLD that will be lined and constructed for use. And then when you go to the bottom uh, DLD, that the, the plot of land that shows our solar array in uh -huh. it, yeah. that is two future DLDs. So we have the land space and the capacity to perform this operation for decades to come. Uh, we even, when we put that solar array where it's, sit, where it's situated right now, we made sure the timing of that lease was so that we could grab that process area back if we needed to. So we were able to do a 25 year solar mm -hmm. power purchase agreement. Um, but we, if, if process, you know, coming later on three decades from now, if we need to recapture that, we can. So we haven't robbed ourselves of a future, a future solids processing area. Okay, great. So I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. And then, so for future planning then, might, might you then consider um, just as, again, this is just from my understanding, a higher recycling scenario if, when decades from now, right? When people, when we start running out of room here, yeah. we might need to do a more higher recycling scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I would say not even decades away, uh, probably in about five or six years, if any of you are still on the board, we'd be coming back to kind of gear up for the expiration of the contract that we're talking about extending right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Ms. Maple. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to echo the comments of Director Kennedy. I think it's always a good practice um, when we can to take a look out and see what else is out there, especially if it's one that's been, been happening for quite a while. I mean, the answer might be it's still the best, um, and that'll be reassuring to, I think, all of us. But for me, I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing if, there's, um, if there can be an RFP and an ability to look at what else is available. Um, I was also looking at the, you know, kind of non-financial non evaluation, and, and as I look down to the future regulations, you know, obviously you, you don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what, you know, the regulators might do, um, but, you know, based on your experience and the conversations that are being had, do you think there's a possibility that some of those regulations might be that we need to recycle more faster? Um, the, the PFOS regulation could put us in that situation, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. And I just want to say that we will take a look um, at 
whatever analysis we've already done on on alternatives to Cinegro, and in, in other words, another vendor, um, we'll, we'll, we can put that information together and do a quick report back to the board on on that, um, so that you have a sense of why we've gone that direction. That'd be great. Thank you, Ms. Kaplan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dobson. I'm actually going to request, um, because I'm sure uh, knowing the thoroughness of our, our regional SAN and what you guys do and how thorough this presentation is, to really look, is there anybody out there that even qualifies? If so, have we taken a look? If not, um, something back to the board. I think it's just prudence because you have you do have new board members here and it's always good to just double check and if it stays the same great um, but just something reasonable uh, to look at so thank you for following through on that um, we know PFOS is coming as much as uh, what what the standard is and the regulations are are you know still up to debate as we know that is constantly going on. So one of the things, um, Steve, as you brought up, is we're really going to have to look at uh, do we need to do BRF uh, expansion and what is the cost of that capital expansion. Um, I, I see the forethought of what we can do on site, but have we brought back to the board and looked at, um, you know, I think it's important that we start looking at that five-year plan. What is that most appropriate step if it is um, BRF and some new emerging technology or it is the expansion of our current BRF uh, facility because tighter regulations, higher requirements are coming. So being prepared for it, because you and I both know capital expansion doesn't just happen overnight, and it's a it's a long process. So I think the information that could come back to the board sooner uh, rather than later on um, just being prepared for what-if scenarios so it's not a surprise when they, when they actually come down um, is something that I would be very much... Uh, interested in because I think you guys have done an excellent job planning for the expansion of more housing, more uh, more waste that needs to be uh, recycled, but it's the unknown of, of federal regulations and, and PFOS that I would like to see us start doing a long-term planning for. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Any public comment? Do not have any public comments. All right. Well, that was a really great report, really thorough. I appreciate it. I think you mentioned um, that BRF and paralysis are the likely PFAS pathway. So yes. that's sort of the pre-identified one, we think, um, not knowing exactly what sort of standards or regulations might be applied. Th that is correct. We know enough about PFAS and the numbers that they're considering and the realness of it that uh, it wouldn't be wise to not include it in the table. So we're most likely at some point looking at the column on the right as the alternative. Echo water to the solids. All right. Thank very you. good. Thank you very much. Keep in, keep in mind the PFAS, um, although it's clearly coming, as you've said, um, there's a lot of different ways to address it, and it can be addressed upstream of us. We're, we're hoping for that alternative. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to item number eight. For item number eight, you're acting as Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District. Uh, this is a public hearing, adopt impact fee adjustments and amendments to the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District Consolidated Ordinance. And you uh, continued this action from April 12th. Good morning, Chair, members of the board. So last month on, on the 12th, your board... Uh, approved introducing ordinance changes for regional SANS ordinance, which included a five-year impact fee schedule and a update to the construction, the sewer construction cost table, and also um, changing the name from SASD to SAC Sewer throughout. Since then, we got some feedback and a letter from the North State Building Industry Association, and uh, the regional SAN has provided a response to that letter, and both are included in the board package. Uh, we are working in parallel with the BIA on those concerns that they brought forward. I believe they also submitted a comment letter last night or yesterday. Uh, we're on the same page with moving forward with the ordinance adoption, which uh, a highlight of that is reduce the 
impact fee um, or in the infill impact fees uh, by about 10 percent. And so uh, we're going to continue on discussions with the BIA in parallel um, to address those two pointed concerns that they have. So I do want to point out in the uh, table one on the board package itself, it does say um, it's a dollars per ESD. And that does apply to single family and commercial, but for the multifamily and age restricted, it is age restricted. It is uh, dollars per unit. <clears throat> it is correct in the ordinance itself. So you know, proving that this item today, you know, works out. With uh, so, if ordinance changes are approved today, they'll go into effect July 9th um, this year. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Chair Sander, so you can open for public comment, and then close if you approve, and hopefully move this item forward. All right, so this is a public hearing, so I'll open that public hearing and ask for that public comment. We have a speaker card from, is it Chris Nonan? Norm. Norm. Yeah. Welcome, Chris. Chris Norm, North State BIA. Uh, thank you, Chair and uh, members of the board. Uh, that's the first time I've actually been to this board. I've talked to a lot of you at your uh, at the Board of Supes or other places, but um, now we've submitted letters and we've been in communication with your staff on on this item. And obviously, the the fee loads are uh, of central concern for us. Some of you know that we did a fee study several years ago, um, a comprehensive independent study that showed that buildings, uh, new housing construction in this region pays about $40,000 more in fees than other comparable areas around the state. So since then, we've done um, very detailed uh, analysis work on every single Nexus study that comes across our desk. And uh, we find weaknesses and work with the staff to try to uh, correct those things. So. We identified two in this case in which uh, you have essentially new construction being charged to offset uh, the, the fees for affordable housing, which are being waived for those affordable housing units. Um, and then the second one was that it seems that there's uh, fund balances that aren't attributable to specific projects. Um, and the program actually asks for new construction to pay into fund balances that would be carried over for, uh, I guess, security or future planning. So. Um, what we're asking for really is tethered to state law requiring that these projects that are being charged for new construction are actually going for expansion of capacity. So um, not to get too detailed, but we're going to continue to work with the staff and, and work through these issues and make sure that we have everything uh, tied down correctly under the law. And uh, we may be back, you know, in, hopefully in a collaborative way to adjust some things in a few weeks. So, um, but we have a good relationship um, and it's important to us to do that. So. Um, I think that's really my comments right now. Uh, we don't mind you passing the an ordinance in structure with the understanding that we might have to make some modifications later. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Chris. Any other public comment? We do not have any other comments. All right. I will close the public hearing. Any board member comments or questions? All right. We have an action in front of us. Is there a motion? We have approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Roll call, please. Directors Karpinski Costa. Yes. Desmond. Aye. Frost. Aye. Hume. Aye. Kaplan. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Laloi. Aye. Maple. Aye. Orozco. Aye. Robles. Aye. Cerna. Aye. Soon. Aye. Valenzuela. Yes. Villegas. Aye. And Sander. Aye. And that's a unanimous vote with those members present. All right, that takes us on to item number nine. You are acting as the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and the Sacramento Area Sewer District. This is input on establishment of an infill development board committee. Good morning, Chair. Uh, this item is actually was suggested by Chair Sander uh, a few meetings back. And so we brought this forward. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit of input we would like uh, the, from the staff perspective before we move forward to make sure that we have sort of the, the structure and the purpose of this committee. And then um, our, uh, we can go back and formulate a recommendation for that committee and, and bring it forward. Um, so what, what we're looking for is, is to get clarity on the purpose of this. Obviously, infill development is, is the topic. Um, but one of the things we're wondering about is how um, internal this is to regional SAN and what regional SAN and SAC sewer 
can do for infill development or if it's expected to be more outward uh, facing to other agencies. And I mean, our perspective is I think that's more of like a SACOG or uh, an organization like that, more of their uh, focus, but we want to get clarity on that. Um, and then just a little bit on that sort of flows to then what type of a committee would this be? Does it have a, 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 sh a relatively short lifespan where we go from start to finish, or is it just an ongoing, um, a standing committee? And then a little bit on just how many representatives we think we would want. So this really, um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Chair Sander um, to get some input, and then we can formulate a recommendation from that. Sure, thank you, Chris. Uh, this topic has come up a couple of times, maybe three times over the past two years with discussions about the importance of our fee structure with regard to infill development. And a number of hands have gone up here saying we're interested in pursuing this at a couple of levels. And so I suggested, because there's an ongoing effort at SACOG uh, that we have participated in, and we also have some internal policies that are helpful, but we haven't really taken a dive internally in this organization to figure out what's the next step for us. If we wanted to go further with regard to infill, what are the additional steps that we could take as an agency to support um, infill development and to knock down some of those barriers that make it so difficult? Um, I, so I think the answer to your question, Christoph, would be certainly it's internal looking in that respect, but it also it's a little bit external in the sense that we need to collaborate as fully as we can with, uh, with SACOG and our other partners in the region to sort of work on, on these goals as a region, and I think you are correct, SACOG is likely the lead agency in that sort of an effort, but obviously we would be a big part of that. Are there other board member comments on this? Mr. Sewin. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for, for bringing this up. I, I wholeheartedly agree with, with this effort, um, and, and I agree that uh, a regional organization like SACOG, and I know I'm glad Chair Kennedy's here as well, uh, should take the lead on it. We're just one, you know, the, the sewer fees are just one component of, of the fee structure, as everybody here knows. So uh, us being part of a more regional effort that, that can be more comprehensive uh, at a SACOG, I think is appropriate. And and then I'll just uh, uh, echo your, your sentiments. Getting our sanitation district staff to dive deeper in, in terms of looking for savings and, and abilities to uh, reduce funding. And I know this is like a balloon, so we'll have to you know, likely increase somewhere else, but at least that analysis, that technical analysis by staff will be helpful to inform the conversation going forward. So I, I, I agree, a, a, a committee here with uh, staff allocated to a larger effort spearheaded by somebody like SACOG, I think is appropriate. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Chair. Um, wholeheartedly agree, uh, and we have a number of SACOG members here. Um, I would like to offer to facilitate a meeting with SACOG staff and maybe Director Suen and the Chair, uh, as a former Chair of SACOG yourself, um, if, if that would be appropriate and you'd like me to do that, I'd be glad to do it. Sure, that would be great. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I agree with everything that's been said. I guess the only other question I have in terms of process, obviously the ad hoc or standing committee, whatever we determine, <laughs> not everybody can participate. So I wondered just a little more clarity on the actual product, uh, maybe um, options for the board to consider because as a, sub, as a subcommittee, there may not be consensus or agreement on what's brought forward, and so at least giving the full board the opportunity to explore, um, you know, a bite at the apple, so to speak, right? So I, I would, because it doesn't say that in the staff report, and I just would add that as a, as a suggestion. No, I think, the, I think that's a great suggestion. I would, I would hope we could do this sort of on a voluntary basis. Sure. Unless legal counsel is going to tell us, oh, no, no, we have to be appropriately distributed, you know, across the different aspects of the organization. But I would view it as ad hoc, not ongoing. And you know, with some goal of coming back within six months or a year with a report, or at least some suggestions about what this agency may do and some reflection on what the region's doing. Any other comments? Okay, Christoph, I think we'll probably come back next time ask for volunteers on this topic. Yes, uh, and what are you thinking about in terms of the size of the committee? 
It would be a, based a little bit on interest. I would think okay. three or four board members would probably be the sort of the minimum we would hope for. All we right. might have three or four interests, interested parties here already. I think we had more than that the last time we discussed it. At some point, I suppose we might trip into a quorum question, but probably not. It takes a while to get yeah. to Yeah, <laughs> because it's a little bit of a complicated quorum, so yeah, probably not. Right, keep in mind, we'll fairly soon be one board with 17 members, so right. it would take nine to get a, a quorum there, so we should be pretty good. I don't think we want that big of a committee. No, that's probably not a committee. <laughs> All right, that's, all right, any that's other all comments? If not, we're gonna move on to item number 10. Uh, for item number 10, sac this is the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District. This is the miscellaneous director and district engineer matters. All right, just very quickly, our May 24th meeting is canceled. So the next meeting's on June 14th. And I also wanted to just uh, Give you a quick reminder, we're looking forward to the uh, celebration event for celebrating the um, completion of Echo Water and then sort of the groundbreaking or the starting of the Harvest Water project. And so that celebration event's on May 19th. You should have received an invitation to that. And that's all I had. Now are we gonna cut a giant ribbon, turn a giant valve? Drive heavy uh, equipment. That's my personal favorite. That, Drive uh, heavy equipment. That's top secret <laughs> stuff. I don't know. We'll, we'll do something fun, I'm sure. <laughs> right. And Blow we'll something make it up. safe. Oh, that's not really sewer dog. -like. All right, very good. Uh, that brings us to item number 11, public comment. Yeah, I, I oh, 10. please continue, item 10. Uh, I just wanted to point out that we need to uh, add another member to our investment committee with the departure of uh, Director Howell. Uh, it's a very sexy committee, and I would not like to deny someone else the opportunity of serving on it. And, and we do have a, uh, an item on our investment advisory committee uh, meeting today to discuss that a little bit further, but we, we did lose Carrie Howell a while back. so. Okay. I guess okay. what we're saying is, is that we want to volunteer. That would be fun. You get to meet for a whole other hour after this meeting. Yeah, Come on, everybody. Boy, the volunteer. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell who had their hand up first. <laughs> you really sold that one. All right. Do we, would you like a volunteer today? Would that be helpful, or are we going to put that off for a month? Or a week. Dinner at that point. Well, we're we're uh, we're surviving with the the t uh, we have two board members right now, right, of the of the committee, and um, so we're surviving for now. But we were going to again talk about it a okay. little bit. Um, if we have someone that's interested, let me know. Um, obviously, this meeting is just uh, it's, it's right after this one, so it won't be for another quarter before we need uh, that that group together again. All right. Anything else under item ten? If not, we're moving on to public comment, item 11. We do not have any public comments. All right, and then item 12. Um, item 12, you're acting as a Sacramento area sewer district, and this is your consent matter. Uh, this is a contract to approve the first amendment to the agreement with Maven Asset Management to provide Maximo upgrade and support services. Move approval. Second. Any questions on this item? Seeing none, no public comment on this item. No comments. Roll call, please. Okay. Um, Karpinski, Costa, Daniels? Yes. Desmond? Yes. Aye. Frost? Aye. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Cerna? Aye. Soon? Aye. And Sander? Aye. A unanimous vote with those members present. That takes us on to item number 13. Yeah, you're still acting as the Sacramento Area Sewer District. This is a resolution of intention to lien delinquent sewer charge, service charges set a public hearing for July 12, 2023, and there is a PowerPoint. Good morning, Chair and members of the board. My name is Randy Wolf, and I'm a county manager for Sacramento Area Sewer District. And uh, we come before the board annually to requests the adoption of the resolution of intention regarding the delinquent sewer service charges and to set up a public hearing. 
Uh, this year's public hearing is scheduled for July 12th, 2023 at that board meeting. The property owners that have been affected have been notified and they have about two months to get their accounts in order. The, they were notified on April 29th, 2023. The number of projected preliminary delinquent accounts for the, fa for the past five years is shown on attachment A there. And it, you see that it's trending upward in the, the year 2023. We reached out to Cubs and they said this is consistent across the board for all utilities. Uh, the number is uh, about 17,782 accounts and the delinquent charges amount being approximately 11.3 million. Uh, Supervisor Desmond, in the past you had mentioned about uh, requesting information on the percentage of commercial accounts versus residential accounts and this year that number is consistent in that it's still 2% uh, commercial accounts and 98% delinquent accounts are residential. So today we're requesting the board to take the necessary actions to transfer the delinquent sewer service charges to the property tax bill. All right, are there any questions on this item? Any public comment? No public comments. Move approval. All right, second. motion and second. Roll call please. Karpinski Costa? Yes. Desmond? Aye. Frost? Aye. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Cerna? Aye. Soon? Aye. And Sander? Aye. Unanimous vote with those members present. May I get the first and the second again, Mr. Hume? Second, soon. Okay, thank you. And All right, that brings us to miscellaneous matters and potentially adjournment. Anything else that should come before us as a body? All right, seeing none, we are adjourned.